Hello, my name is Joshua Enns, and this is Discussion Board Post 1 for History 300, Historical Methodology. Christianity is a religion based on a book, and this book makes specific and repeated claims to temporal events, events taking place in and through people in time and space. It makes claims of real people existing. Pontius Pilate, for example. King Nebuchadnezzar would be another. And this links the scriptures to specific events in history. The scriptures make overt claims to historicity, and this is more pervasive than merely the gospel details of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. But the entirety of the book claims to have taken place, and this is something that ought not to be taken lightly. As being a people of the book that makes these claims to history, it is no wonder that history is understood best with a Christian worldview. One of the reasons this is true is that the Christian worldview gives a specific bookend to understanding history. When I say bookend, I mean that origins and the end of history are best understood within the Christian framework. The Christian is able to point back to origins and say that there was a time when history was not, indeed a time when time was not, but that God created all things out of nothing, including time. We are also able to look forward and say that while we do not know what the future holds, we know that there is a time coming in the new heavens and the new earth where there will be a, 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 a place, a time where there is no time. The Christian ought to be careful in these areas. Dr. Sam Smith comments well on this problem of Christians having a providentialist view of history in his lecture. He says that it is at best unwise and at worst untruthful to seek to know the providential reason for each event occurring within history. And while we ought to be careful, and indeed we can say along with Moses in Deuteronomy that the secret things belong to the Lord, but the revealed things to us and to our children, we can say with confidence where history came from, where all things have come from, and where all things are going. That is the consummation one day to take place. Furthermore, on a more rudimentary and foundational basis, the Christian worldview pr presents a foundation for objective truth and the ability for such truth to be known. Ultimately, we recognize all knowledge has its source in God. We want to respond rightly to this recognition by loving God with our minds and by promoting intellectual seriousness and intellectual curiosity among our students, Dockery says in The Great Tradition of Christian Thinking. Studying history, indeed study of all kind, is best done within the Christian worldview because it is seen as an act that we can love God through our mind. Indeed, Jesus in Matthew 22, verses 37 and following, lists the greatest commandment. That is to love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. History, indeed study of all kind, is loving God with our mind. That is the greatest contribution of the Christian worldview to history. Thinking, study, done as an act of worship. Thank you.